Hi, hi, hello, good morning. Good morning, friends, or good afternoon, or good evening. Uh, it's afternoon for me. Welcome aboard the Ritz Carlton at Rima, Ritz Carlton's very first hotel at sea. We're out on the ocean. <laughs> we left the Azores and we're heading to Lisbon, Portugal. Uh, I want to talk to you today about things to declutter from your life so that you can take a sabbatical and travel the world. We're going to work through some things that I think need some removing, some decluttering, uh, so that you can live out whatever your, your sabbatical dream is. If you have a dream or plan or a desire or a want or a need or a wish or a hope to have some time in your adult life where you're not working, right, where work is not the focus of your life, if you have a sabbatical dream, I think today I'd like to talk with you about six things that you need to work on decluttering. Okay? I'm not a decluttering expert, so I think we, it'll be clear that we're not talking only about physical stuff. We're going to talk about physical stuff. We're going to talk about some other things, too. Uh, so I'll give you the full list, and then we'll walk through it. But first, if you're new here, welcome. My name is Stephanie Perry. I'm a house sitter. I'm the creator of House Sitter School and the co-creator of Exodus Summit, and I help black women take a sabbatical or a career break, bop around the world as a nomad, move abroad, house sit, all while embracing ease. If any of these things sound good to you, you know what I'm going to say. Subscribe to this channel, please. If you're at all interested, hit the subscribe button and then turn on notifications, ring the notification bell so that you'll be notified when I post a new video or when I go live with my friends. Hey, friends. Hi, Cherie. Hey, Herman Dow. We're on the... Ms. Dow and I are on this boat together. <laughs> hey, the ABX girl. Hello, Radical Health Series. Good morning, Letitia Watts and Ms. B. Good morning, Dorstu98. Hey, LaShonda. Hey, Montan. Hi, Chanel. Hey, Reggie Sweet. Sweat. Reggie Sweat. Hi. Hey, Kat from Rebloom Room. Hey, Latasha. Hey, Helen Ellis. How's everyone? Hey, Something Better. Hey, Charles Etta. Hey, Kaylee. Hey, MJ. Hey, Carol. How's everything? Let me show you so we can get this over with. <laughs> Let me show you the view. Let's see. Is it crooked? It's a little crooked. It's just water. <laughs> the view today and tomorrow is just the ocean. We're just going to be seeing the ocean for two more days until we get to Lisbon. It's been a fantastic cruise. Uh, you're going to see me. I'm going to try to be focused and dialed in, okay? But I'm mildly distracted because I just got a video of a couple of dolphins. <laughs> so I'm going to be mild. I'm going to try to focus. I'm, listen, I'm focusing. I'm locked in. I'm locked in, okay? Uh, this has been an amazing trip. It's been, uh, let's see, we left. We, act, we were supposed to leave on the 4th. We actually left on the 5th. And today is the 13th, I believe. Um, so that means eight days. Eight days of amazing yacht life, I recommend it. It's been fantastic. And you know how we do, I'm not going to just hoard this for myself. I'm not going to just save this idea of taking a sabbatical or of traveling the world or of working less, of doing as little as possible. I'm not just going to save this for myself. So I would like to talk today about six things that I think we need to declutter in order to live out our sabbatical dream. And I'm going to tell you the six things right now, okay? We need to declutter our stuff, number one. We need to declutter our dreams. I think we need to declutter who gets a say. We need to declutter who gets our attention and our time. Uh, we need to declutter our values, which uh, I understand to be different from our dreams, okay? And we need to declutter our income streams, okay? I've got a list of six things that I think we can talk through today, and I'm going to list some resources for, like, where you can go to get more help with that particular number, right? With that particular declutter number. Do any of these stand out for any of you already? Wait, first, if you didn't say good morning yet, you have to say good morning, okay, or good afternoon. It's the rules, okay? It's 3 p.m. in Portugal. Uh, so you can say good afternoon, you can say good morning, you can say whatever. If you're watching the replay, hello, friends in the future. I hope it's amazing. Uh, you have to say hello, okay? So that's rule number one. I just dropped my thing out of my case. I hope I remember that. Wow, 
while I was spinning my laptop around, I dropped my thing that was in my case. I hope I, I'll remember to look for it later. Okay, you have to say good morning. Did any of these, good morning, good morning. <laughs> Did any of the numbers that I read off um, strike you? Any that you know you need to declutter more than others? Stuff, number one, dreams, number two. Who gets a say, number three. Who gets your time and attention, number four. Your values, number five. And your income streams, number six, or the dream income streams, or the income streams you're already pursuing, the income streams you think you should pursue. If any of these stand out to you more, let us know, okay? And that's what I'd like to work through for the next little bit. Uh, so why, let's, the, first let me start off with why a sabbatical. Black women don't get time in our lives that's for us. We're taught and told and shown that our lives are supposed to be committed to work and that we're not supposed to have free time. We're not supposed to have space in our lives for things that we enjoy, that we're supposed to only enjoy the doing for others, the working and the struggling and the striving for others, um, and that anything else is just frivolous, unnecessary, wasteful. And I hate that. I hate that message. I hate that belief. I hate it. Uh, I, this is, as far as I know, this is our chance. This is our shot at life. <laughs> this is it. This is not. A, I know this is not a dress rehearsal. This is a life to be lived. And if we want to get to that last day and say, I lived it. <laughs> I lived it. Not, I worked hard. So other people could live their lives, Right. Not I sacrificed everything, but I lived my life and I enjoyed my life. If we want to get to that last day, I think it's going to require significant chunks of time in our adult life where work is not in charge of us, where work is not the focus, where our jobs don't have a say in what we do, when we do it, where we go, who we go there with. Our jobs have so much control over our lives and it's out of, it's out of pocket. <laughs> our jobs are so out of pocket. They bleed, it's, work has become an invasive species, right? Bled over into every part of ourself. Uh, and so I really, really, really just want black women to take sabbaticals, not one, plural, sabbaticals, where we have big old blocks of time, weeks, months, years, where we are in charge of our time, where we are the only ones in charge of our, of our time, what we do, where we go, how we live. <clears throat> I will always talk about the sabbatical. Yes, a lot of women in this community are moving abroad and retiring and, you know, completely quitting work, which I love. Uh, but it doesn't have to be that. It can be just a, this chunk here and go back. And this chunk there and go back. Planning a sabbatical is more, is simpler than planning a full-on retirement where you're not going to work ever again, Right? So start with the sabbatical. It's going to lead to retirement anyway. <laughs> so start with the sabbatical. So that's why we're going to talk about these things. Why are there so many categories? Why not just the stuff? Because Q-Tip told me, no matter where you go, it, what did he say? Something about where you're at. <laughs> it ain't where you're from, it's where you're at. Whatever. You take you with you. And you take those people with you and those beliefs with you and those uh, black and that black excellence, you take it with you. If you don't declutter it, it's going to be with you everywhere. It's Sometimes it's really hard for black women to relax into their sabbatical. They can't do nothing. They can't be saying nothing. They can't be working on nothing. It's really hard. Uh, and so some stuff we have to declutter. Rachel Cargo calls it unlearn, right? Some stuff we got to let it go. We got to start letting it go. Just like decluttering your physical space, it takes time, right? It takes time, time. <laughs> uh, but we, we can start now. If you know where you want to head, I say start now. Estella Speaks, good morning. The categories, number one, declutter your stuff. Number two, declutter your dreams. Number three, declutter who gets a say. Everybody don't get a say. 
Number four, declutter who gets your time and attention. This is really important. Uh, number five, declutter your values. Declutter the things that, you're, that are important, your values, your priorities. This is separate from your dreams. I don't know that this is in a good order. I may have to reorganize the order, <laughs> okay? And then number six, declutter your income streams, okay? Stop chasing money all over the place, okay? Declutter these things. Declutter your income streams is number six. Anita. Hi, Anita. Anita says, I'm decluttering things and people. Yes, okay? That's what we want to do. We want to declutter things. We want to declutter people. We want to declutter beliefs, okay? So that's what I'd like to talk about today. So first, I want to point you to a video about decluttering stuff. I'm not an expert at decluttering stuff, but I know one. Tosh Patterson came and talked to us, I believe, in 2021. It doesn't seem like that long ago, but I think Tosh Patterson came and talked to us on this channel about decluttering your stuff uh, back in 2021. And in the description of this video, I've linked to her talk with us, where she worked us through various categories of stuff we need to declutter. She talked about decluttering clothing, decluttering papers, decluttering like memorabilia and photos, decluttering the things that are important to us, decluttering books, decluttering plants, right? She worked us through different categories and how to move through that. You may have read Marie Kondo's The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up. Marie also breaks things down into categories and talks about how to, how to declutter things in those categories um, in a really helpful way. I'm going to point you to Tasha's video here. It's already in the description of the video if you're watching the replay, okay? But I'm going to point you to my conversation on this channel with Tosh Patterson, uh, where she worked us through the categories of stuff and how to approach that, right? How to approach each category. Uh, some things are easier to declutter than others. Some things are really emotional for some people. I was at my wit's end. Okay, I was at my wit's end when I left in 2015, left my house and my stuff in 2015. So I didn't have a whole lot of struggle with decluttering stuff, but some people do, right? Some people have more of an attachment to things, to, to their things, right? <laughs> uh, it's kind of no, normal and natural to have an attachment to your things. We're talking about this not because it's a, a weird thing. It's not strange to be attached to your stuff. It's not wrong to be attached to your stuff right? It's wrong to let your stuff hold you back. It's, long, it's wrong to let your stuff be the boss of you. But it's not wrong to be attached to it, and it's not wrong for it to be hard for you to declutter it, hard for you to let some of it go. That's why we bring in the experts. We bring in people who are used to this, <laughs> and we get them to help us with these things. I don't know that Tosh in the real world is still talking about decluttering, I think she's, she's, she's hosting retreats, Goddess Collective Retreats, uh, living her life in Mexico, right? So, so I don't know, but there's someone. There is someone who is right now helping black women declutter physically. Uh, but I want to point you to Tasha's video because she did such a clear breakdown. If someone here in the chat knows a black woman who talks decluttering your physical stuff, like the actual art of decluttering, let us know. I've read um, the Afro Minimalist book but she's, she's talking more about minimalism, not about getting to the point of minimalism. Uh, well, God is wise, says I'm too sentimental. That's the thing that some people have, right? That doesn't mean you can't make the move. It doesn't mean you can't become the person who has let go of her things. It doesn't mean you can't declutter, right? Create a new life that you'll be more sentimental about than the old. And some of that means getting rid of some stuff. Some women are decluttering so that they can physically move to a new place. Some sabbaticals mean leaving your home behind because you sold it or you rented it out or you gave it away, you burned it down. I don't know, right? Some people are actually leaving a space. Some women are keeping the home, right? Your sabbatical can be in your house. But I submit, you can't hold on to the old stuff from the old life and be a new person. This is, I think, why it's been so easy. A reason that it's been so easy for me to let go of my stuff because I didn't want that stuff because I didn't want that life. <laughs> I was over that life. I knew there was something better and I was determined to get to that better. And I was ready to let all of that stuff go. Let it go, let it go, let it go, let it go. Erica De Niro TV. So you talk decluttering. You have videos on your channel. 
you can't link. So YouTube won't let anybody but me and the admins link. Me and Nyrell and I can link things. So let me see if I can get to it in a reasonable amount of time. If not, then we'll we'll talk about it on, on my channel sometime, Erica. Let me see. Listen to the water sounds while I look for it. <laughs> were you raising your hand because that's you? Or were you raising your hand for a different reason and I'm very confused? I don't see, let me see. Tell, well, let me know and then uh, if you're watching the replay, I may have found a, the video that, and have have it linked in the description. Yeah, I, oh, maybe speaking about decluttering. Okay, no, I don't speak about decluttering. Okay, I saw your hand raised. I thought that's what, I'm behind in the chat, so I don't know, I missed it. Hi, I think that was just a hello. <laughs> yeah, I think, I really believe in being a new person in a new place, in a new environment. Even if that new environment is actually the same place, just with a different look, right? We're a new person in a new environment. I believe that. I believe it. I believe it. And so some, we got, sometimes you have to let some stuff go to get to the new. Rashida documented her decluttering of her, of her storage, right? The removal. So Rashida left on her sabbatical in, I believe, 2018, had a lot of things in storage and went back. <laughs> Paid for that storage for five years. And then 2023, finally cleared out the storage, right? Five years. And that stuff, a good amount of that stuff didn't fit her new life. Some did, right? But some didn't. And, have the, uh, and paying for it wasn't worth it, I don't think. I think that's what she would say. She documented this on her YouTube channel, which y'all already know. Uh, at Rashida. I can do this. Dot com. No, HTTPS. YouTube. Dot com. Slash. At Rashida. Okay? When you go to Rashida's channel, you'll see her videos on re re decluttering after already moving into her new life. Going back through years and years of storage of stuff while already living a new life. I say don't take it. Don't take it into your new life. <laughs> Start over. Even if, you're, even if your sabbatical is in your same house. Declutter some of that stuff. Get rid of a lot of that stuff. Get rid of it. Be a new person in a new environment. Okay? That's what I would recommend. Hi, it's Doyen Sola. Hi. This community helped me take the step to get a roommate, to start saving more, pay off debt. Step one, check. Good. Now I'm fo focused on decluttering. Wonderful. Yeah, we are pro golden girls over here. You're young. So I don't know. What are the young roommates called? Living single? Okay. So y'all are living single. <laughs> right? Regine and Khadija and help me. Somebody help me. Y'all know. Sinclair. Okay, so y'all are living single. I'm looking for a little Golden Girls arrangement myself. <laughs> right? More, uh, April saying Swedish death cleaning is a, I think that's a book and a like way of cleaning, uh, of decluttering that people are really into. Swedish, Swedish death cleaning, from my understanding, is getting rid of things before, as a senior citizen, because listen, one day you're going you gonna to be gone and everything in here, somebody else is going to have to take over. I think about that with my mom. I said it to her not too long ago. She was buying something. Oh, on this trip, she wanted to buy some placemats in South Africa. And I said, only thing the placemats going to do <laughs> is sit in the house for me to get rid of when you die. Right? For me to throw away when you die. <laughs> right? uh, but it's not just an approach that people take at the end of their lives. It's an approach that some people take throughout their life so that they don't have to do the big thing at the end or somebody else is not left to do the big thing at the end, right? <laughs> Maxine, right. Maxine lived on her own, though. She just, she was the neighbor. Yes, right? Uh, I think about that. What, 
I, w- I would like to live in between. I would like to live a life, you know, that I'm on my way to Costa Rica in May. And I'm on my way to start looking for my own place finally. After almost eight years of being a nomad, I'm ready to look for my own place to live with some golden girls. <laughs> with me and my golden girls. And um, I think about how much, how do I make sure that I don't just accrue stuff and stuff and stuff. Stuff for somebody else to take care of when I'm gone. How do I live so that the things I need are the things that I have and I don't just have stuff for somebody else to get rid of, burn, throw away when I'm gone? Ty Libra, I'm going to start cleaning up my house and thinking about renting a room while I bop around. Yes. Good. All right. Okay. So y'all are with it. That means we're with it. We're down. Everybody is down. Nobody's like, no, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not interested in this decluttering. Okay, but I want to point you to Tosh, Tasha's video because she did a really good job of breaking down the categories. When you just say declutter, it's a lot. It's too much. It's too much. But when she says, okay, now here's how we declutter our books. Here's how we declutter our clothes. Here's how we declutter our papers. It becomes a little more manageable and you can work on one per month or one per season, right? I don't know if some of you don't have a deadline. It's just a thing that you want to do. Do it as quickly or as slowly as you want. Okay, so stuff. Anything else we need to talk about in terms of decluttering stuff? It's the thing I'm least helpful with. (laughs) I promise you, I have Googled. Dear Google, am I a psychopath? Because I don't attach to things as much as other people do. There are some things that I love. Uh, What is my favorite? I have favorite things. I can't think of like my favorite thing right now. My favorite thing at all right now. But I do have, you know, like I do attach to stuff. But it's really easy for me to be like, bye, bye, all of that. (laughs) To all of it. Goodbye. (laughs) I don't care what happens here. I'm over it. I'm gone. Thank you. I think that's a cancer thing. Cancers are very loving until it's when it's over, it's over. Okay? When we're done, when I'm done with it, I'm done with it. That's people. It's also things. When I'm done, I'm done. Okay? Denise Holiday. Hi, Stephanie. I'm working on getting everything I need and want to have down to a 30 or 40 liter bag. I'm almost there. Coming from a carry-on and personal item, my family have hoarder tendencies. Yeah, so we don't have to live like that forever, right? You don't have to have everything you have on your back forever. But if you do it for a while, it will shift how you approach things later. It'll shift how you approach your of the accumulation of stuff later. Now, it's really easy to fall back into shopping and hoarding and getting and accumulating. It's really easy to fall back into it. I know, right? Every time I walk into a Target, I'm like, I need everything. I need everything. Remember how you used to be able to walk in Target and you couldn't leave without spending $60, right? Just not, I came in here for toothpaste and hair, hair, hair product. How am I spending $60? Now, it's really hard to leave without spending hundreds of dollars. $200, $200 in Target? When I don't have a home? It's really easy for me to fall back into those tendencies. Uh, and so, but having spent a lot of time where I just traveled around and what I had was in my suitcases made, help, helped me like reframe. How much do I really need? How much do I really want? If I get this thing, who gonna carry it? Right? It was really helpful. Really helpful. Okay. ADHD cutie on on solo travel duty says bopping around via pet sitting keeps me from collecting stuff. I refuse to keep paying extra for the overweight heavy suitcases and extra baggage. Yeah, having somebody else put some restrictions on you might be helpful. Hey, Carla Banks. Carla says I'm in the decluttering process. When I'm done, I never want to own things again. Right? <laughs> Taking the time to actual, actually do all that decluttering. It will make you approach the next things. Getting the next things, it'll help you approach that a little bit differently. You'll be changed, right? You'll be changed. Hey, Katrina. Katrina says it took me years to get rid of my things. Yeah, you can take your time. If you're not on a deadline, you're not on a deadline. I'm not into living your life like you're on a deadline when you're not. Ain't no deadline. We were walking somewhere the other day, 
Is that my door slamming? Hi. We're talking, oh, you can see. We're talking about uh, six things to declutter so that we can take our sabbaticals. And the first thing is decluttering our things. Oh, I'm, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. This is not a conversation for me. I'll be back later for another part of the conversation. <laughs> you did it. You did, I did it. it. I did it. Just, it hurt my, I wish I had done it before my sabbatical. Mm-hmm. We didn't like putting my stuff in storage. This is going to sound weird, but putting my, putting my stuff in storage is the biggest mistake I made when I planned my sabbatical. Okay. If I had known what I know six years later, I would have never done that. Yeah. It wasn't worth it. Yeah. I would have made a different plan. Yeah. So make better mistakes. So, yeah. So we're talking about getting, getting started now so that you don't have to be in a rush later. Right. So you don't have to be like, oh, I got two weeks now. (laughs) Now I got to put it all in storage. If you couldn't hear her while she was back there, that's Rashida Dow. I've already linked to her channel. Uh, What she said was putting her things in storage was the biggest mistake that she made on her sabbatical. But in her defense, she didn't necessarily know what the sabbatical was going to lead to. Rashida was not planning to move to Mexico City. Right. She left on her sabbatical without a plan to move to Mexico City. But being a free black woman, (laughs) when she got to Mexico City and loved it, she was free to stay and move there. But that meant that she had things in storage. So, Josette, why no storage? Because Rashida had a full home in storage for five years. Thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars per year for stuff that no longer fits into her life today. And for stuff that it was really hard to get rid of. During the pandemic, the people who used to be, there used to be like reliable places where you could take a sofa, a coffee table, a lamp, and they would take it in. But during the pandemic, them places were like, I don't want your stuff. I guess because they were just, there was an abundance. A lot of people died in the pandemic. A lot of their families took their stuff to those places and they were full. And so now you've got a full house of furniture. Nobody wants it. And you're paying hundreds of dollars a month to store it. Right? It was all, it was a perfect storm of things just not working. Nobody knew the pandemic. We didn't know. Somebody knew the pandemic was coming, but it wasn't us. Okay? And Rashida didn't know that she was going to move to out of the country. uh, Right? Even if she knew she was going to, thought she was going to come back and live someplace else. Maybe she thought she wasn't going to come to the Bay Area. Maybe she thought she was going to return to the Bay Area. But either way, she didn't know she was moving to Mexico City. That wasn't the plan. And so, right, storage ended up being the worst (laughs) decision that she made. But it was the thing that she knew to do. Now she knows to tell you not to do it. We're imploring you not to do it. Get rid of it. Get rid of it. Get rid of the stuff. Get rid of the stuff. Erica, there was a time when everybody was like, no, I don't want it. Rashida moved. Rashida's mom moved. And then Rashida emptied out her own storage. I was in Florida for a day or two of the move. No, one day, a few hours of trying to sell stuff from Rashida's mom's house in South Florida. And nobody was taking the stuff. Nobody. 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 Right? They were full. Everybody had died. COVID There was a lot of dead people's stuff in those places and nobody was taking it, right? Good stuff, good quality stuff. And they were like, no, I don't want it. And I don't know who would, who will take it right now. It was just a really bad time, right? (laughs) It was just a really bad cycle of events. And grubs. I feel like I can feel that breeze. Good. Feel the breeze. Feel the rocking of the ocean. Gently rocking us <laughs> on this Saturday. Good. I'm glad. I hope it feels relaxing to you while we're talking about something that might be a little stressful. Okay? Yeah, Brittany Joy said, <laughs> the, oh, the storage. Those videos had me side-eyeing my stuff. Right. Even if you are not planning on leaving right now, you'd be looking at your stuff like "Mm." (laughs) I'm not doing we're not doing that. We're not going through this. We're not going through this. We're not going through it. Okay. 
So stuff, okay? The first thing that we want to declutter so that we can live our new life is our stuff, okay? The next thing that we want to declutter, I'm going to rearrange this. First, I'm going to talk about the values, and then we'll talk about dreams. We declutter the things that you value. You know what I'm talking about. You know I'm talking about black excellence, and black excellence grip on our minds. Black excellence plus American capitalism plus some other stuff, white supremacist ideology, really has a grip on what we think we are into, what we think we value. But when you get to step away from all of that, you find, I'm not just talking about me, I'm talking about people like me and my homegirls, people I know, everybody, the whole Exodus Summit community. When you get to step away from that stuff, you find, oh, I was never really into that to begin with. I never valued that thing to begin with. I was just repeating what I had always been taught, always been told, always been shown. That wasn't really important to me in the first place. I want to point you to Rachel Cargill's book, A Renaissance of Our Own. If you can't name some things that you value for yourself, then... I I recommend, even if you can, I recommend Rachel Cargill's book to you because she does a wonderful job of walking through how she came up with her, the things in her life that she values and how she lets those things guide her decisions, guide her life, right? I value community. I value freedom. Some other stuff. I value progress, right? I need to make sure that my decisions reflect that. Um, I don't value the things like exclusivity. The things that black excellence tells us we should value are not my bag. I hate them. and And it's reflected even, Rashida and I talked about this just the other day. She talked about how she doesn't like exclusivity either. We talked about this the other day, um, talking about a specific like club that some of her friends belong to. And she said, I hate, I hate that it's the, the whole pull of it is just that it's exclusive, that, other, that everybody can't be there. And I'm like, yeah, I feel the same way. It's one of the reasons we've never called our, the, what people would call the VIP ticket to Exodus Summit. We've never called it a VIP ticket. If everyone in the event space, in the conference space, they would all call it a VIP ticket. We don't call it a VIP ticket. Because that you're, some, this person is more important than this person. We don't live like that. We don't live like that and we don't ref- we don't operate that way because we don't value that form of exclusivity. Now, we value this is for black women, right? We but it is an inclusive space for black women. Rashida and I just ended up in the Washington Post. No. Yeah, Washington Post. So we were in the Wall Street Journal a little while ago. We're in the Washington Post yesterday. We were on the boat. We were on the no we weren't. We were on a bus returning to our yacht yesterday from town and I open up my email and I see uh, the Google alert for Rashida's name and it says Rashida Dow Washington Post so I was like you're in the Washington Post today girl (laughs) we open it up and I said it out loud I said you know you're in the Washington Post today and the man behind her heard it we were all it was a handful of passengers coming back from our day's excursions to return to our yacht to our ship and he was like, you're in the Washington Post. He said, I have a, I have a subscription to the Post. Let me, look, let me look for the story. And so he read the story while we were on the bus coming back. He said, oh, this is awesome. He said, I can't join because I'm not a black woman. And we were like, no, but you can support. Uh, it's important for us to have a space for black women. But it's not, it doesn't, it's not, we would be operating totally outside of our values to make it exclusive in an, any other way, Right. We don't want a place where you have to be this tall to ride this ride, right? We don't want, this is for black professional women, or it's for black service provider women, or it's for black entrepreneur women. No, it's not. It's for black women. If you live your life as a black woman, welcome. It's for black unemployed women. It's for black women. Um, And so I want, <clears throat> to recommend Rachel Cargill's book, A Renaissance of Our Own, right by Rachel E. Cargill. <laughs> right? She uses the E for Elizabeth. 
uh, because she did a wonderful job of breaking down what do I value, not what do they say to value, not black excellence says to value exclusivity. Okay, but do I really value exclusivity? Turns out I didn't. She didn't. We don't. Right? Um, let me link to her article real quick. I'm in it too, but there's no pictures this time. Okay, so don't get your hopes up. We had some photos in the, was in the Wall Street Journal, but there are no photos in the Washington Post. Um, um, what am I saying? <clears throat> yeah, values. What you value, you have to decide for yourself. And so that requires the free time of a sabbatical so that you or, or not, just the free, just some free time to examine some things that are important to you. I was raised up in the Baptist church uh, where I thought that there were things that were important to me that turns out they weren't. <laughs> I don't want to live like that. <laughs> and so I dropped those values. Uh, I, I guess... I think that's the right way to put it because I think you can be forced to value something where they, I think they were things that I did value, but because I was told to. And once I got to asking some questions, I got to drop them and just value the things that are important to me. It can be as significant as to me, exclusivity, right? Dropping black excellence and the idea of things, some things being exclusive. And it can be as simple as dropping things like valuing length of hair, right? Long hair. <sighs> Somebody's idea of what's beautiful and what's not, right? Not too long ago, I was, oh, I saw, no, I don't want to tell you that. <laughs> sometimes we have, we have to, not sometimes, we have to have time to see if the way that we're living is in alignment with our actual values but you can't know that unless you know what you value okay all right so i've got i've linked rachel's book in the description of this video rachel was a speaker at exodus summit 2023 uh rashida and i read her book to, not together together but we read her book and we were like at the same parts at the same time we talked about it uh so if you have a girlfriend group or like a girl gang i would recommend that y'all do some of that do some, do some, do, I'm learning, Erica. <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> I'm learning. I would recommend that you read that in community with some people, if it's possible. If you're part of a book club, if you haven't already read it, if you're part of a book club, get, get them, get y'all, get that on your list. If you're not a part of a book club, you can start with, or just read it on your own. Okay. So what we value then so decluttering our values is a pathway to decluttering our dreams. I think these are two separate steps, right? We declutter our stuff, then we declutter our value, not then, and we declutter our values, and we declutter our dreams. Once you declutter your values, right, once you drop some values, some things that you think are important to you that really aren't, like marriage, right, uh, for some of us, then you're like, oh, then that opens up some new dreams for me. Right? Or drop some dreams out of the picture. I didn't want that anyhow. They told me to want that. Right? Might be as simple as I want this car. <laughs> I used to want that BMW 5 Series so bad. I couldn't afford it. Even if with a 200,000 mile, I couldn't afford the 200,000 mile BMW <laughs> Couldn't afford it. Didn't have it. I ended up with a Saab that to me looked like the shell of the BMW, right? Ended up with a Saab. I remember how important that was to me, how important it was for me to have a car that looked like I had money when I didn't have money. I didn't have money, but I needed a car that looked like I had money. Uh, and so the value of other people's opinion, when that fell away, then so did the dream of a specific luxury car. Now y'all know I don't want no car. I don't want a car. I don't want a car. When I go back to Delaware, when I get, get when I get, well, if I do walk out of the house, the first few times I got back to Delaware after my career break in 2015, I would leave and got back in 2016, I would leave my parents' house on foot and they would have a fit. <laughs> because 
<laughs> Delaware is just not, it's not a really pedestrian friendly place. A lot of the U.S., right? There's not good sidewalks places. There's not good public transportation. But I would be like, I'm going to walk to the store. Redner's is, it's got to be less than a mile and a half, right? A mile is four laps around the track. So less than six laps around the track just to get to the grocery store might be a mile. I'd be like, I'm going to walk this. I don't have anything to do all day. I want some yogurt. <laughs> and, you know, I want some groceries. With yogurt and the yogurt and coffee and the usual. Some maple syrup, some vanilla extract. I'm going to walk to the store and walk back. They used to have a fit. One time my mom called my cousin who lived between our house and Walmart. <laughs> she called my cousin. It was like, now I was 43, 43 years old. She called my cousin Dars. I was like, Dar Stephanie is walking to the store. Do you see her outside? <laughs> we didn't have sidewalks. We didn't have good sidewalks. And I had to walk along a busy road, but whatever. Um, it's just not a thing. But the car life used to be so important to me. Absolutely not important to me right now whatsoever. Whatsoever. Getting rid of that value changed my dreams. Losing the value Losing the idea that I need to value other people's opinion of me uh, helped me also lose the idea that I needed a dream car. My dream car right now is no car. My dream car is Uber. Uber Black. It would be nice to live in a place where I could afford to take Uber Black when I felt like it. <laughs> That's my dream. <laughs> Josette says, decluttering your dreams resonates with me. I want to do everything and I have many talents, but society's ideas of what I should do tries to take me off balance. So this is another approach to decluttering your dreams. We Decluttering doesn't mean you get rid of. Or it doesn't mean that you only get rid of. Okay. Sometimes when you declutter things, you need to add in a more substantial thing in their place. Right? So you might declutter your coffee mugs because you have 80 coffee mugs you use four coffee mugs a week, right? <laughs> you might, and then you can get more beautiful, more substan substantive, substantial, more amazing coffee mugs on this yacht. The glassware is fan freaking tastic. I'm like, I want these glasses. They have some blue glasses with the bumps, glass glassware, thick, heavy glassware with the bumps. Maybe I'll take a picture of it and post it on Instagram. It doesn't mean that you get rid of only. It's, perf it's Taking two steps forward and one step back is progress. You can get rid of 80 things and pick up two really important, valuable things. Right? I think that works with our dreams, too. We can get rid of all them superficial dreams that didn't really mean anything to us and that we really weren't attached to. We just were doing it because somebody else said we should value this thing. And hang on to the dreams that really mean something to you. If we are getting rid of the idea that other people's opinions of ourselves is more important than our own opinion of ourselves, right? If we're getting rid of that, then we can add on new dreams, a whole bunch of new dreams. And I don't think, so Josette, you're young. I don't think, so what I would say is instead of considering decluttering the dreams because you want too many things. I would say expand your timeline. What I find with a lot of young women uh, is that you have these timelines that are just so oppressive. <laughs> you're, you're your own oppressors because you create these timelines out of nothing that say you need to do X by the time you're 30, X by the time you're 40. Girl, give it, let loose yourself from the timeline. You may want to declutter some dreams if they're not your real dreams. But also, you may just want to add on some time. Give yourself some time. It's okay to have a lot of different dreams. and want a lot of different things. I think. It's okay. Some of us are that. Some of us are singularly focused at one time. Some people have one singular focus for one period of their life, and then they pivot to something else for another period of their life. Other people have multi-focuses. We call them multi-passionate or something, right? Either way, you have to be true to who you are. I, so I'm not here to tell you to declutter your dreams because you want too much. But I am here to say, extend the timelines, please. And thank you.
okay, this is what I find with the young women. <laughs> Extend the timeline. Girl, I didn't have the money to put gas in the BMW, let alone get any maintenance work done. <laughs> Thankfully, my dad was like, this is ridiculous. <laughs> I'd be like, oh, I went and test drove, test drove a BMW at least once. And he was like, this is ridiculous. <laughs> let me t let me tell you how much this car is really going to cost you. <laughs> I didn't have the money for any of it, but it was really important to me that I looked like I did. It was really, really important for me at that time in my life. That's how I know you can be a different person in a different environment. If I had stayed in that environment, it probably would still be really, really important to me. Probably, right? But I'm in a new place and I am a new person. Okay? Hello, JZS. Hi, neighbor. Yeah, Re Reggie, no interest in cars. Paid off my car and we'll drive it till the wheels fall off. Right? Like, that. I can't tell you how important that was to me. It was very, it consumed a large part of my life during that car hunt, hunt process. I looked for a car when I first got to the Army in, at Fort Hood. Spent weekends driving all over Texas to buy a car. <laughs> Seriously. Because I wanted something I couldn't afford. And then when I got out of the Army, I did another car search. Uh, and then the third car, after I totaled that car, the second, I totaled, so I went to, to I had the Camaro and then I had the Acura, I totaled the Acura, and then that final car was the, I wanted the BMW, and I ended up with the Saab. That was the last time that I uh, was really interested, because then, once I paid off the car, I was like, oh, that's what life is like. <laughs> this, I, for the first time, because I think the Acura, I totaled it right before I paid it off. I don't think I ever had no car payment after the Acura. Uh, and then I totaled the totaled it and used some of it to buy the Saab and had a car payment. So, but that meant that I got to pay the Saab off pretty quickly. And once I paid it off, I was like, oh, this is life. <laughs> this is life with no car payment. It had never occurred to me <laughs> that it would be better if I didn't have a car payment. Like, seriously. Seriously. <laughs> and... I was not the most responsible person. In my 20s, until I hit 30, my car insurance and my car payment was often the same amount of money. Right? Once I hit 30, things, things opened up for me. But that it was such an important part of my life. I can remember that. But it does seem like a different person. It does seem like a, told a different life. It, this was really, really, really important to me. That I had a car that looked like I had something. Right? But I decluttered my values and decluttered my dreams. Okay? Yeah. Carla Yvette says, my mother literally, literally believes there's no life without a vehicle. Yes, I think I kind of come from that family. My dad is a car guy. He cannot understand. He cannot understand. Right? So, it's not their dream. Right? It's not their life. It's not their dream. It's okay if they don't get it. I, it's, and, I, you know, I'm not a person who thinks that my I have a responsibility to convince people. I'm not a convincer. That's not what I do. So it's not my responsibility to convince people that my way is the way or that my way, even that my way is right for me. I don't have to convince you that my way is the right way for me. I'm just going to do it. You get with it or you don't. Not my department. <laughs> not my ministry. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Katrina, my dream car is a tuk-tuk in Sri Lanka. Katrina's in Sri Lanka, y'all. I'm so upset. I'm so jealous. Okay. <laughs> Sri Lanka is the only place I regret not going on my sabbatical. I was close, but the money just was so tight that I couldn't make it work. All right. Uh, I feel like I need to pull out my extension cord and my thing. Actually, I'm just going to go inside and finish in the inside and charge, plug my phone in. I mean, to plug my computer in. I forgot to do that earlier, and I re regret that now. Because my battery is low, and by the time I find the extension cord and stuff, it'll be ridiculously too much time. So come with me into my suite. My suite. And ignore the empty room service containers. 
This is my suite on the Ritz Carlton of Rima. Most of my, so there are five of us on this yacht together and most everyone is um, in arts and crafts right now. I think Rashida just left for arts and crafts. Um, this is my suite. It's a really good size suite for a cruise, I think, right? Really good size. The bathroom is nice too. Um, so let me charge, let me plug in. Because I think by the time I, I have an extension cord that I travel with, but by the time I find it in the bottom of my suitcase and all that, it'll be too much time. So I'm sorry that you're not going to hear the ocean waves from in here, but I was unprepared, underprepared. Sorry. For, also sorry for that view of my armpit. I, <laughs> I didn't think you wanted an up close view of my armpit, but if you did, that was it. Okay. All right, let me charge up. Maybe you can still hear a little bit of the water. Sorry about that. I did post a couple of videos on this channel um, of us docking and taking off from a couple of places. So if you do want 30 minutes of water sounds, they're on this video, on this channel. If you look at my two videos, you can just put in Ritz Carlton and you'll see my two videos. Hold on. I got my thing in a knot. Okay. Okay. All right. So, I think I'm going to sit here. Oh, sorry. Let me get it together. Sit here and put my computer here. That's good enough. Okay. We can make it. Okay, values and dreams. So I think they're two different things. And I think uh, decluttering one leads to the other, which is why I reorganized the list. Okay, so we decluttered our stuff. We decluttered our values. We decluttered our dreams. Next, I think we declutter whose opinion matters. Who gets a say? Anybody want to talk about, anybody want to share Someone who you've decided no longer gets a say. <laughs> right? Decluttering whose opinion matters for you and your life. Because we're born alone. And we're going to die alone. And some of those people whose opinions we're living for. Once they're long gone, the, the decisions that we made that put them first are still going to affect us, right? You make a decision today to value someone else's opinion for you over your own. That can be a lifelong decision. That can be a lasting decision. That person's going to be long gone and you're still going to be living out the effects of that decision. So, we're going to declutter who gets a say. This is beyond family, right? This moves into all, being a black person means a lot of black people get a say, right? A lot of people get a say. If you're raised in the church, if you're raised in any particular like organizations, a lot of people get a say in who you are and how you be. If you're buying into other people's opinions of what's beauty, a lot of people get a say. If you're buy if you're if you are loyal to a political party, a lot of people get a say. People who don't even really care about you. <laughs> People who don't see you individually, don't care about your individual peace, your individual happiness, your individual joy. A lot of people get a say. Look, make a list. And decide how many of them you are willing to sacrifice your life for. How many people are you really willing to give up everything for? My list is really small. <laughs> uh, 
we have um a lot of there is a lot of pressure, a lot of stress, a lot of yeah, pressure on black women from everybody. Everybody's got something to say about our appearance about the way we live our lives, about the way we raise our families, the way we create our families, or don't. Everybody's got something to say, but we need to decide who gets a say. Who are you listening to? Who are you living for? I spent more time in the church than any place as a kid, except for school, I guess. Sometimes seem more than seem sometimes seem like more than school. Because I remember church stuff more than I remember school stuff. <laughs> um but I don't I don't want that to have a say. I don't want they don't get a say. You don't get a say. <laughs> you don't get a say. Okay. It's really easy. So Sonia says that's just it. Hold on. Sonia, that's just it. Uh, it's their, their opinion is theirs. It ain't got nothing to do with me. But it kind of does because they get a say. <laughs> when you live your life with those like dogma and doctrines, subscribing to that dogma, subscribing to that doctrine, they're getting a say. They're getting a say, right? We talked not long ago about like politics. They get a say. Uh, I keep going back to the standard of beauty because that that's a thing that I am. This is the pl a place where I am recognizing my like shortcomings. When I see a black woman who obviously has no concern with other people's beauty standards. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to say it. Okay. So I saw a, a, an interview with Stacey Abrams. Maybe some of you saw it too years ago. This was probably two, three, four years ago where she said she doesn't think about that stuff. But in the video, in the interview, she was wearing makeup and her hair was done. So I was like, that's not true, but maybe it is true. Uh, somebody else was like, maybe in Rashida was like, no, she, they, other people probably put that stuff on her. Okay. She didn't take the time to do that. Other people told her she had to do that thing. I still don't really understand a woman who's not at all. Some, you know, you've seen it. Some women, you just look at her and you're like, she is not at all interested in presenting herself in a more beautiful way. Right. She didn't do nothing to her hair. She ain't put on no eyebrows, right? She's wearing a t-shirt and Ill, you know somebody else's sweatpants, right? No jewelry, no earrings. I still have feel judgment of her because I'm still subscribed to more traditional beauty standards. Maybe not the whitened beauty standard. Less and less, less and less. Not, not, not I'm not at zero. But less and less, I'm less and less bought in to the white beauty standard, but I'm still subscribing to somebody's standard of beauty that is not from within me, it's from the outside. And I'm really confused when I see women who have not done that. <laughs> I'm really confused. <laughs> okay? That's real talk. That's real talk. Yeah, everybody's got something to say. Right. It's, it's easy to be like, oh, no, they, yes, they do. Yes, yeah, Every way that we live our lives, uh, there's somebody with something to say about it. But we need to be very clear on who gets a say. Whose opinion do we take in? We're hearing those opinions all the time. It's impossible to not hear it. I don't care if you're a hermit in the woods. You hear other people's opinions of you somehow. And other people's opinions on what is right, what is good, what's better, what's beautiful, what's important, what is success, what is failure, all of that. But we have to decide who we're going to, what, what of who from there we're going to take in. 
Everybody's got a say, but we need to decide who gets a say. So declutter that. Whose opinion matters? Whose opinions do you hear? If you sat down and made a list of people whose opinions you hear, you would be, I think we would be surprised, right? We'd be surprised on all the directions that people are giving us <laughs> feedback. <laughs> people are giving us feedback from every direction. Feedback we didn't ask for. But we're hearing it and we're taking it in if we haven't decided you don't get a say. Okay, how am I doing on this? There are some things that, you know, I'll be thinking about them, but I've never, I never get to talk about them. <laughs> and when I talk about them, I'm like, am I clear? It makes sense in my head, but am I clear? Ah, let's, look at this, Latasha. I did not grow up in a church. I also grew up around a very diverse community, different cultures, religions, races. My parents allowed us to be. We had no rules. What a free form life. I didn't grow up like that. Right. In my world, it was perfectly fine to be judgmental. <laughs> if you grew up in the church, you were expected to be judgmental. <laughs> you were expected <laughs> to have a very narrow idea of what people should be and what they should do and how they should X, Y, Z. And it was perfectly acceptable to say out loud. <laughs> this is wrong. This is unacceptable. This is this and that. Right. I watched a clip of Say Yes to the Dress while I was falling asleep last night. And the girl came in with her two friends. It was an old clip on YouTube. A girl came in with a girl, bride, came in with her two friends. They were black, covered, fully covered. Right. They had no exposure whatsoever. Right. They were young girls, 22, maybe 19, 20, 21, 22. The bride said she wanted a more sexy dress. And they were like, no, you don't. And no, she don't. And we're not, do right? Uh, it was expected that you be judgmental, right? Not just that you feel the judgment, but that you express the judgment. Very much expected. Uh, that's no different from Black excellence, right? Very much expected that you tell people what is worthy and what's not worthy. What's good and what's not good. Uh we grew up, you know, most of us, I think most of us did grow up with that, with the idea that you get a say. <laughs> most of us grew up with the idea that you get a say. Why are you doing X, Y, Z? Why are you looking like that? When are you going to blank, 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 right? When are you going to? People say things like that to me. I got a comment not to. Here, I'm living my dreams, right? I got a comment not too long ago. Stephanie, it's time to get your weight under control, Right? Every, we believe we have a say. And this is black women. My channel, most of the people who comment and watch my videos are black women who are much more loving and much more kind to each other, right? But I saw that, I saw that comment. I'm like, yeah, because we believe we get a say, right? This is the person who believes that she gets a say, right? Would have been me 10, 15, 20 years ago, right? Believing that we get a say. If you don't want everybody's opinion inside of you, you have to sit down and decide on who gets a say. Seriously. And sometimes what they get a say about. Right? Rashida gets a say on a lot of my business stuff. A lot of stuff. But not everything. Right? I don't get a say on everything about Rashida. I don't get to say, Rashida, you need to get three inches taller. We take pictures. Every time we take pictures, I'm like, I look like a giant. <laughs> in these pictures, my mom, her mom, Marilyn, Rashida, not one of them is five foot three. I look like I'm wrong when you're the ones who are wrong. Okay. <laughs> I don't get a say on how tall she is. <laughs> yeah, we were participating in creating these restrictions. We were because partic because oh, we got to keep it going. Got to keep the restrictions going. We can't be free. <laughs> can you imagine? <laughs> How can you have a religion where black women are free? You can't. It's not possible. This is why I know we're not a cult, right? Okay. So every now and then someone will jokingly call this community, these communities, a cult. And I'm like, here's why we're not a cult. <laughs> Number one, cult leaders seem like they have a lot of hard work to do. And I'm not, we're not working that hard. Okay. Me and Rashida, we're not going to work that hard. But number two, all we want 
is for y'all to live your dreams, right? All we want is for you to live your lives. Absolutely. Could not, could never cult. We couldn't cult if we wanted to, right? <laughs> because there's a lot of control required. Ain't nobody got time for all that. Who gets a say? Okay, so I hope that you sit down. I hope that if you don't, if none of these others felt any way to you, if you have no response from any of these other points, I hope you sit down with this one and decide on well, who gets a say and what do they get a say on? And then live that out. Okay? You covered it all. Ra, Ra A says my family was Methodist, Baptist, Jehovah's Witness, Catholic, Muslim, all of it. <laughs> all the rules. <laughs> all the rules. All the restrictions. <laughs> <laughs> I'm already a tall friends dear readers she is not a tall I'm like I'm gonna look like a giant but that's my whole my anytime I'm anywhere with any of my mom's family that's just how it's gonna look I'm going to look like I'm wrong when they are wrong <laughs> the short people are wrong not me thank you okay <laughs> I'm going to look like a giant. I'm not a giant. I am an average height person. All right. Pinky says, other people only get a say until you're an adult. After that, you don't have to subject yourself to anyone's BS. Grew up with a lot of hypocrisy from supposed Christians. Again, I want to say, you think they don't get a say, but they're getting a say. Until you purposely, intentionally decide they don't get a say. Okay, I want to say they get a say. They got something to say. And you're hearing it. And you're probably taking it in. Unless you have intentioned. <laughs> unless you have on purpose decided that they don't get a say. Even your own thoughts, right? Because because you Because we have these thoughts. Because we've heard these messages. We have these thoughts. And so you also have to tell yourself, these thoughts don't get a say. Uh, I wish I could point you to the actual, it was really a wonderful video. I don't remember who it was, and I don't remember what the actual video subject was about. But in it, I think a woman said, you, t you can tell, you can hear the thought and then just tell yourself, I'm not thinking about that. And then just don't think about it. <laughs> right? So when I look at myself and I see a picture and I'm like, oh, I look like a giant. I can just say, I'm, but I'm not thinking about that. I'm not holding that. I'm not carrying it. I'm moving on. I wish I could think, come back to it. I remember when she said it. And I was like, oh, I started doing that right away. Okay. I'm not thinking about that. <laughs> I'm not thinking about that. <laughs> As a, I know, I hear it all the time. <laughs> Patty OG says it too. I hear it all the time. That, but I know, I know how I know it's not a cult because cult leadership is hard work. I'm not doing that. Ain't nobody doing all of that. <laughs> Ain't nobody doing all of that. Okay, get back on track. Get back on track. Okay. So these are the cultivating freedom. Ah, oh, Adrian, thank you. Cult, yes, cultivating freedom. Thank you, Adrian Divine, a divine artist. Thank you. That's very sweet. All right. So, who gets a say? And then the next thing that we want to declutter is who gets my time and attention? Because spoiler alert, that's how they get a say. So we don't only need to declutter who gets a say. But we also need to declutter who gets my time and attention because that's how they sneak in their say. All right. This is can be as simple as like social media, scrubbing your social media or like decluttering. We're using decluttering, decluttering your social media. Don't follow people who make you feel bad. <laughs> right? Don't follow them. Block them. At least unsubscribe. Right. Don't follow people who make you feel like you're lacking and who don't make you feel like you can do it, right? I like to scroll through Instagram and be like, oh, you can do it. 
<laughs> right? They're some of my favorite people to follow. They make me feel like I can do it, even if I don't want to do it. Right? I love following Libria Jones on Instagram, the remote work queen. I, I don't want no remote job. But she feels me, makes me feel like I could. <laughs> makes me feel like I could do it. Right? RV Karen, the mom trotter. The mom trotter on Instagram. She lives in an RV with her husband and her son. I don't want to live in an RV. I don't think. I would love to RV around, but I don't want to live in an RV. Uh, but she makes me feel like I can do it. And not like I'm, I'm really a terrible person because I haven't done it. Right? So, so something as simple as decluttering who you follow on platforms. A good way to start deciding on who gets your who gets your say by deciding who gets your attention and then purposefully just like we talked about earlier sometimes we take we declutter something to get more quality Declu declutter the quantity to get better quality this is a thing that i've been done a pretty good job at on social media i'm not saying i'm the best i still i follow thousands of people on instagram okay but i do feel like i've done a better job of r removing De re unsubscribing and unfollowing from things and just and making sure that when I follow something is like I'm getting something, especially YouTube. There was a long period in my life when natural hair YouTube was my passion, <laughs> not my passion, but I spent hours and hours and hours every week watching natural hair YouTubers, including Roshni Glamazini, who's here, right? I spent lots and lots of time. Uh, I don't, I don't do that anymore. I can't remember the last time I actually watched a natural hair video. Every now and then I do still watch a makeup video. But I don't watch natural hair videos anymore. I don't want that. I don't want to. I don't want to feel bad about me and my hair and the way my hair looks. So I don't. I don't watch. Right? We can remove the volume, remove the quantity and get a better quality. And a lot of that can start with social media right? Unfollowing people who make you feel bad. <laughs> Unfollow people who make you feel like you're not this and you're not that. A lot of times I hear from black women, oh, I don't do social media. I can understand it. Now, I think they're missing out. I think they're missing out on good. YouTube is not social media, but this, my platform, the Exodus Summit platform, the women in Exodus Summit, we have social media platforms, right? Uh, and I think they're missing out on what the good that we do get and give each other in those spaces. But I can understand why women are like, I don't do social media because it can really be poison if everybody's getting in, if everybody's getting your time and attention. It's poison. So we need to declutter and cultivate spaces that serve us, that feed us. How are we doing? Let me, I'm really far behind. Let me scroll up a little bit in the chat. Yeah, negative internal thoughts can destroy us. That is how we're, those internal thoughts are determining our beliefs and our actions and our inactions. We got to get a handle on them. We don't know what we're thinking until we have free time and quiet to hear what we're thinking. And then we got to count, reprogram what we're thinking. Yeah. Everything we think is not true. That's right. Garden for my soul. Hi. I love this uh, screen name, Garden for my soul. I have to remind myself that everything I think is not true. That's right. It's just a thought. It's not true. <laughs> right? Well, we don't know because we don't know what we're thinking, really. We don't get to hear what we're thinking. And then we don't get to hear how that impacts us. Yeah. Just because you think it doesn't mean it's true. I am average height, Adrian. <laughs> I am average height. <laughs> Good morning, Diamond. Good morning, good morning. Okay. Hi, Wild Love Living. I've been in the beauty industry for many years. Ultimately, most people are looking 
expectance, enoughness, looking for acceptance maybe, and enoughness, however, only you can create that for yourself within. It's worth cultivating that. That's right. That's right. Absolutely right. Cultivating freedom. You guys like that? Okay. Adrian. Adrian. Cultivating freedom. X, I'm 74. What about age? Is this a serious drawback to doing this? Thank you. No. Listen, you're younger than you're ever going to be again. And you probably have quite a while to go. So this average life expectancy thing, people get it so convoluted. Average life expectancy is average. It includes all the people who died on day one and day 4,000 and day 800 and day 17,000. But we're still here. The older you get, the more likely you are to live old, <laughs> to, be, to become a very old person, especially now, right? 74, there is a one day you will look back on 74 and be like, oh my gosh, look at this picture of me. I was so young. <laughs> Don't you do that now? I looked at some videos of myself from 2020. I was like, oh my gosh, I look so young. <laughs> I was 40 something. <laughs> I was 40 something, 40 something, 46 in 2020. Right? You're always, you're right, right now. We are younger than we will ever be again. And most likely we will live for quite a while longer. Unless you're really willing to just throw these years away. Make a change. Make a change. If your question is about moving abroad or taking a gap year, or sabbatical, bopping around. I, d I don't think there's an age limit. The age limit is D-E-D. <laughs> that's when it's too late. That's, that is when it's too late. Right? I did a video not too long ago and I was like, here's one question you can ask yourself to find out, is it too late? Am I already dead? <laughs> I thought that was so funny. <laughs> I cracked myself up right now. Right now. I wrote that down. <laughs> I wrote it down. All right. I, there's time left. Now, how much do you want to enjoy it? How much do you want to live? Make that. Make that the point. Make that the point. Yeah. 60 solo mystic traveler who is Mar. La Mar. <laughs> Hi, Mar. I made a rule last year to only follow people I can learn from, not for niceness, reciprocity. Okay, good. That's a good way to put it. It is an intentional space for unlearning and relearning. Yes. You don't have to feel obligated to follow somebody because they follow you or follow somebody because you met them, because you met them on a boat. Right? You don't have to follow them for that. If you decide that your Instagram is a place for you to learn, unlearn, and relearn, then make it that. If you decide your YouTube channel subscriptions is a place for you to grow and be a better person, then make it that. It doesn't have to be about, oh, I, I know her, I like her. If it is, make a fake Instagram. Make a second Instagram. Make a second Instagram. If you do want to do niceness, <laughs> if you do want to do niceness, make an Instagram that is for niceness. And then make a, a platform, of an Instagram that is for you to learn and unlearn, for you to grow, right? For you to have community or whatever things you value. This is why we need to know what we value so that we can know how we want to operate, right? Do You can do that. Do it that way, right? You don't have to. You're, it, these things, I understand why women, black women are like, oh, I don't do, I don't do Instagram. I don't do Facebook. I don't do, I understand it. But I do think they're, you're missing something. They're missing out on the good. Now, you got to know how to reject the bad and only have the good, only subscribe to the good. Right. And that may not be something that they think is worth their time. I think I, I happen to believe it is. OK, I happen to believe it is worth it. It's worth that effort. So thank you for that suggestion or for that mark, for letting us know that you don't have to do niceness. You don't have to do nice. You are living your life like your happiness, like your peace depends on it. <clears throat> your joy depends on it. 
So you don't have to do nice. I promise. You don't have to do nice. Nobody. We don't. We don't have to. Okay. Yes, Kat says the same. Her social media feeds are places of joy. Yes. Right? Ah, uh, Ray says, I used to watch a lot of true crime, but I was constantly thinking negatively, so I stopped. I don't even miss it. Yeah, decide on who gets your time, who and what. I actually wrote down who slash what. Who and what gets your time and attention? Who gets your time and attention? What gets your time and attention? Now, I want to write a cozy mystery book series about a house sitter who solves crime. So in this period, this area, this era of my life, I might give some time and attention to, to some crime stuff. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> I would love for one of the books, one of the books in the series to take place on this here yacht. <laughs> Maybe I walk into my room and I find the room attendant has been a victim of a crime in my room, the, the, the character's room. Oh, no. Okay. And she's got, listen, they are going to put her in the clink. <laughs> she's got to solve this crime real quick or they're going to put her in the clink. Right. So maybe I need to watch more. Maybe you watch less. All of this is a work in progress. It's all a work in progress, right? Nothing is permanent. Nubianette said it. Subscriptions don't have to be permanent. Our interests change, okay? Nothing is set in stone. You are not a tree. Get up and move. All right? Okay. Thank you. You guys are so full of compliments. Thank you. <laughs> I like to dye my hair. We talked about not too long ago, how my battle with the gray. Uh, I like to dye my hair like a chocolate cherry, I think is what the, what are they called? The box. Uh, Faria. Faria chocolate cherry. That's my favorite hair dye color. My hair is naturally more sandy than you would think. My hair is a sandier brown color than you would expect it to be. And that plus the gray. Okay, so see, now I'm about to inject something into somebody's brain that they didn't think, they didn't want, okay? I was about to talk bad about the color of my hair and the gray. And then somebody else was going to be like, I was about to get a say in somebody else's brain about how they feel about their own hair color. This is what I mean by who gets to say, <laughs> who gets your time, who gets your attention, right? I was about to, or I already did, I already expressed my dissatisfaction with my own self in a way that was going to, could possibly cause someone else to feel the same way without meaning to, without wanting to. That's not my goal. I didn't sit down and start this video to make somebody else feel bad about her hair color. But I was sure enough, that's the path that I was about to hit, right? <laughs> I was about to be on that path. We need to be very careful on who gets to say. Because that's sure enough what I was, where I was going. That's where I was going. All right. Abba, YouTube, I'm re just scrolling through the comments. I'm a little bit behind. You, Abba says, YouTube travel content gets an inordinate amount of my time. So, Abba, you've been traveling. Are you still in Vietnam? I'm behind a, li a little bit, I think. Are you still in Vietnam? So you're traveling full time. You're seeing things in the world. It makes sense that right now you would spend a lot of time looking at travel content. Because, look, how do I know where I want to go? <laughs> if you don't tell me how great the place is that you're in, right? I understand that. There might be a time when you're not into it anymore, right? Maybe not. Maybe you'll all stay into it, right? But maybe not. All of it is voluntary, right? In the Army, when I was in the Army, they used to be like, it's a volunteer Army, right? <laughs> it's a volunteer Army. You decide. Yeah, so Stephanie DK, change up your social media to support your dreams and goals. Do it. I like it. I like it. So I don't have a lot of pressure on me. So YouTube is not social media, right? YouTube is a different platform, a different, it's its own thing, 
it's like a search engine plus a community platform. But like Instagram, I like Instagram now. <laughs> For a while, it was really frustrating because I was viewing Instagram Instagram as a business tool. Once I gave up on Instagram being a tool for me in my business, once I gave up on it being a business tool and it leaned into it being a platform for my growth, I like it a lot, right? But believe me, I'll, insubscri I'll subscribe to some stuff, right? I do that. E exactly, Erica. Yes, I need to curate my, curate my feed better. I just stopped going to Facebook. Yeah. Now, some platforms, they don't make it easy to curate. Facebook is it's, it's the hardest one, I think, to maybe because I just accept everything, everybody's requests. Anyway, let me get off that. Yeah, they're different, uh, but we can you can make it what you need it to be. Make it what you need it to be. This is an amazing time for Internet. It's an ama make it what you need it to be. If you're in a season of growth or experimentation and change or solitude or whatever, Make sure that the places that you go to on a regular basis reflect that, right? That might be Instagram and YouTube. It might be your home, right? Whatever places, the places and spaces. Okay? So we've decluttered our stuff. We've decluttered our values. We've decluttered our dreams. We've decluttered who gets a say. And we've decluttered who gets our time and attention. The final thing I want to talk to, talk to, talk on is decluttering your income streams. And this is just because I happen to know that black women out here doing all kinds of stuff to make, make some money, make this, make that, instead of worry, instead of focusing on, not worrying about, instead of focusing on make, letting money flow into our lives by doing the things that we want to do. Some of you have no real interest in the things that we're pursuing for money, and it shows with the struggle and with the strain that comes from pursuing something that you're not into. We have all heard the data point, may or may not be true, that the average millionaire has seven streams of income. But as I talked about in my video called something about income rivers, something, okay? Uh, those streams are not separate, individual, unrelated streams of income. They come from a river of being good at something and monetizing that something in a variety of different ways. And that's kind of how I do things, right? I became a house sitter and I shared house sitting on YouTube. My income all comes from me being a house sitter directly or indirectly, from House Sitter School to my YouTube channel, which is monetized, ads run on this channel, and YouTube gives me a cut from that, right? To Exodus Summit, where we talk about sabbaticals and career breaks and house sitting and moving abroad, right? To merch, t-shirts, to YouTube coaching, right? I even do, I do YouTube coaching, which is related to me talk, having a YouTube channel where I talk about house sitting. Uh, all of those things are from one river. There is more ease and flow when you do things in that way. This is just a personal imploring. I implore you. I beseech you. I'm begging you. Stop doing everything. Stop doing everything. This is why you don't have time for a sabbatical. You're busy doing everything. Find the thing that leads to flow in your life. Do it. And then let people pay you for it. Let people pay you for it. If you would let people pay you for the things that you enjoy doing, you wouldn't have to do, maybe, 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 you wouldn't have to do so much of the stuff you hate doing. Okay? I know I'm one person and I'm talking from my experience, but I'm also talking from other people's experiences who I've met and talked to. And I don't think that we're exceptional people. I don't think that we're exceptional people. So I think if it can be done by me and my homegirls, it can be done by you. So I hope that we can stop chasing this and this and this and this as a way of making money. Charge people <laughs> for <laughs> charge people for the thing that you do that they want you to do. 
and do less of the stuff you don't want to do. Am I being clear? This is another thing where I'm like, it makes sense to me, but am I being clear? <laughs> am I clear here? <laughs> Adrian, uh, Adrian says I'm junior tall. I'm ever tight. I promise y'all. I'm ever tight. I'm an ever tight person. Okay. Uh, yeah. So let's do the, the thing that you want to do for money. We're not in a pl place in, in the economic cycle of life. <laughs> We're not in a place where money is there without us doing things for the most part. Our community is trying to change that. Our community is putting together money to send black women on sabbatical, right? Uh, to give black women money just for being. Uh, and we've already done it and we're continuing to do it, okay? But if that's not you, if that's not how you're eating this month, <laughs> that's not how you eat and how you pay the bills. Instead, I hope that you can take some time and look at the things that you've decided on for money and find readjust. How can I do more of the things that I love doing for more money and less of the things I don't love doing? I don't, I'm not here to judge what those things are. We talked very in depth over the last couple of weeks about phone sex and feet pics. I'm not here to tell you what you enjoy and what you don't enjoy. You decide what you enjoy and what you don't enjoy. But I hope that you can lean in more to the stuff that you enjoy doing and find the rivers of income there instead of being spread super thin. I think, listen, when you're spread really thin and you're not really good at anything, right? You're not able to do anything well. Ugh, it sucks. It's hard. Everything is harder when you're able to do your thing well and make good money at it. It's better. <laughs> It's better. The sanctuary. I'm going to live to be 104, so I've got 44 more years to get it all in. Yeah. Listen, 104 is not going to be very, it's not going to be super old by the time we get there. It's not going to be super old by the time we get there. 90 is no longer super old. Remember when 90 was super old and now everybody's 90? Remember when 100 used to get on the news? Now every family knows some 100-year-olds or has 100-year-olds. We're going to keep on living our lives. We're not, there's no deadline. I don't like the idea of deadline living, right? Living. I mean, we all going to die. <laughs> I'm not here to say we're not. That's, see, this, that's a cult, cult, cultish thought. Me talking about nobody's going to die would be proof that this is a cult. Okay. We all going to die. <laughs> Everybody going to die. All right. So I'm not saying live as if there's no end. In fact, I'm saying live as if you're going to get to the end and you don't want to be adding to your list of regrets. But the end is not going to come just because you're 76. <laughs> that's, not how, that's not how life works. You've hit the average life expectancy. Now turn in your life card. They don't do that. This cruise will end and we're going to have to turn in our little key card. This one's right here. I hope I know what it is. We're going to have to turn in our little key card, I think. Right? The cruise is over. But I don't think that's how life ends. Okay, so we have to be more thoughtful about what we want these years to look like, right? Tay, oh, what made me get rid of my home instead of renting it out for income? I didn't want to. I do as little as possible. I know that about me. That is one of my values. <laughs> right? Seriously, I'm not kidding. I'm, jo I'm laughing and smiling, but I'm not joking. I don't want to work hard at things. I don't want to have to figure extra things out. Right? I'm a person who's going to do it the easiest possible way. For me, the easiest possible way was not having renters, being stressed about that. Uh, now, for some people, the, I, having renters in your home is simple. Right. I am my I am me and you are you. For some of you, renting your home is the easiest possible way because, you know, somebody's going to rent it. I didn't necessarily live in a place where I knew somebody was going to rent my home for what I needed it to be rented for. Right. My home was old. My home was built in 190 something. Every something was always going wrong. 
I told you about the time the heater went out. At this time, I was a runner and I went to all these five and 10K races around town and the same company sponsored all the races and that should have been a clue. They gave me a little orange refrigerator magnet with their name on it at every 5K I went to and every 10K I went to. So when my heater goes out, I call this company. The man comes to my house to replace the heater or to give me an estimate on the heater, sat down at my dining room table. Instead of telling me how much the heater would cost and the, the replacement, he started right now two something per month times 24 months, right? Like it's a car payment. I was like, the hell? I'm not paying this. <laughs> I said, thank you. Have a nice day. And I called my dad and I was like, I would rather use space heaters in every room than pay this man a car payment. So my dad put a new heater in my house for, I think, $2,000, I think, which of course, I didn't even have that. I didn't even have that, right? My house was not a house that was going to be a profitable rental. It was going to be a stressful rental. And I'm not a good landlord. I would not be a good landlord. I don't answer people. I don't reply to calls. I don't reply to texts. I don't reply to emails, right? For me, the right decision was not renting that house out. For you, the right decision may very well be renting that house out. Because some things that some of y'all did was got into neighborhoods that other people would really want to be in. Right? <laughs> got into places where you know you can get a renter. This is a very individual decision. It was very specific to me and myself, <laughs> not to anybody else. And some of y'all renting your home out is the pathway to financial freedom. Some of you have a home where that home can cover itself and your travels. Do it. Okay? My answer is not your answer. Okay? Do it. <laughs> Thanks, Josette. Yeah, I want to... I was supposed to write a book while I was on the boat, right? I was supposed to... Time is so funny. Where is, where is the time going? Well, first of all, I've spent, in, I've spent a little too much time drinking. I've had more drinks on the boat than I had expected, which has impacted the next morning. So I've been, had less morning free time than I had anticipated. But yeah, I think my next phase of life, once I get myself set up in a home in Costa Rica and get my family, my next phase of life is that I write books and sell books in my own publishing company. And I sell other people's books, and that is how I live. That is how I support myself as a book author and publisher. That's where I'm moving. That is where my, that's the trajectory that I'm on. Uh, that's the vision that I have for myself that is not anybody else's, right? That is not, nobody gets a say, right? Nobody else gets a say on that, right? That's where I'm going. Yeah, I have, I would love to, uh, there's some settings that some locations I've been in. I'm like, this would be a good mystery. <laughs> I think a ship would be a good mystery. <laughs> it would make for a good one. I would like to write about the Lake Chapala area. In Lake Chapala, I had a lot of very senior citizen friends. And I think that would be a hilarious book. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's where I'm going. Yes, Murder, She Wrote. Jessica Fletcher is my girl. <laughs> That's where I'm going. Navis says she closed her account and started over. So if you're looking at a way to declutter your Instagram, your Facebook, your whatever, your YouTube, whatever, that's a, that's an option. You can shut it down and start over, right? You don't want to take the time to unsubscribe from 4,000 people. <laughs> I probably subscribe to 2,500 people or follow 2,500 people on Instagram, right? If you don't want to take time to undo all of that, shut it down, start over. You can do it. It's yours. It's yours. Third Eye Nation, white capitalists decide how we should look and feel. Absolutely. I'm not here to downplay the, the amount of information, the amount of feedback, unwanted, unwarranted, unmerited, unsolicited feedback that we get all day, every day. Uh, I'm a pretty vain person and I will comment on people's appearances. And you know what? You're not supposed to do that. <laughs> You're not supposed to comment on people, but I'm a pretty vain person. I'm pretty into the outside appearance of people, right? Uh, capitalism taught me that. <laughs> it taught me that. Oh, P.I. says make it a love story. Okay, <laughs> I'm down with that. <laughs> I'm down with that. 
Okay. All right. So I think this is it. So income streams, any questions about the income stream situation? Stop chasing everything. Lean more into the things that you're into. Now, Rashida and I, I'm not supposed to tell you all this. Rashida and I had committed, had not committed to hosting the Get Your Next Three Clients Challenge at all this year because our calendars just didn't work out. But it may be possible that it will happen this year because we miss it. We love it. We like it. And we've had enough requests that we could try to squeeze it in somewhere. So the Get Your Next Three Clients Challenge uh, wait list is at exodussummit.com slash next three, the number three clients. Ex get on the wait list just in case, okay? We're going to look at our calendars and try to find a, a week to host that challenge. Slash next three clients. Okay, if your thing, if you know that your thing, the thing that you know how to do is a thing that could support you without you doing 10 other things, get your next three clients challenge may be exactly the help you need. Okay, so we're going to work on, we're going to look for a week to do it. I still am not guaranteeing that it's going to happen this year, but I, I, I expect that we will find a week to do it this year. I know it's, <laughs> it's only April, but... It, in this, sometime this year, okay? Sometime this year. And hopefully before Exodus Summit season, which is like July and August, but I don't know. No, I don't know. I don't know. We're going to Fiji. We got a lot. To, we got a lot of places to be. We got a lot of places to be. Um, yeah. And then my YouTube success challenge, vicarious.com slash challenge. My YouTube success challenge is open for registration. Now that's happening April 22 through 25. 2024, okay, which is soon. April 22nd is very soon, not next week. Yeah, not next week, but the week after, the YouTube success challenge happens, and there's still space there. I sent an email out to everyone who was on the wait list for the YouTube success challenge, so a good portion of those will be filled up by the time we're finished today. The, the second email went out today, uh, this morning. So a good portion of that challenge will be filled up before... Uh, by the time we end, but there are still some spaces. So vacarious.com slash challenge if you want a YouTube channel to grow, whether it's a brand new YouTube channel or a YouTube channel that you haven't started yet. That's no, a brand new YouTube channel or a YouTube channel that already exists that uh, is not growing yet. Okay, join the YouTube success challenge if you want to learn how to make the videos that YouTube knows how to suggest to strangers to get the relevant viewers over to your channel. Let me link to that. I'll link to that in the description as well. If it's not already there, I'll link to it by the time the replay is up. Okay, YouTube Success Challenge, 30 black women, YouTubers together in a community for a week, growing their YouTube channels by learning how to make videos that YouTube can suggest to people. Just like YouTube one day suggested my videos to you, right? You can learn how to get YouTube to suggest your videos to new people over and over and over again. Okay. That's how I've grown my YouTube channel. We're at a, over 160,000 subscribers. Awesome. Uh, and so that's what I show. That's what I teach in the challenge. Okay. Uh, so that is happening April 22nd through 25th, 3 p.m. Eastern time are the coaching calls. And uh, there will be 30 women in the challenge. Okay, I've linked to some of the other resources that we've talked about today. We talked about Rachel Cargill's A Renaissance of Our Own. I've linked to that in the description. That's a book I think you should read. If you haven't already, read it. Um, and I've linked to the video from Tosh Patterson on decluttering. I've linked to that in the description of this video. If you want to go back and hear her talk about the specific physical decluttering that we need to do and the specific categories and the way we divide things up, the way we make progress on that decluttering. I've linked to her video as well. Um, I don't think, I didn't link to our Washington Post article, but I'll go back and link to that as well. Rashida and I happen to show up in the Washington Post. Thanks, Colleen, if you're here. We happen to show up in the Washington Post this week. This is not, this is separate from the Wall Street Journal. We were in the Wall Street Journal a little while ago. This is a separate article, but it's, um, there are no pictures of us this time, but it's, it's a, I'm sure it's a good article. I need to read it. <laughs> I'm sure it's very good. Read it and let me know. Let me know. 
Okay, so I've linked to those things. Oh, house sitting. So I didn't talk about this <laughs> in my outline. I did, but not out loud. I didn't talk about the idea of who gets a say in your life. Um, being it, it being so freeing when you decide that people don't get a say. So I talked about the car thing, right? And no longer needing a luxury car to feel like a, a worthy person. Um, when I started house sitting, it could have been, I could have viewed it as a defeat, right? I could have viewed me becoming a house sitter as a girl. What is she doing with her life? And I'm sure that there are people who saw that. I'm, sh I'm sure that there are people who interpreted it that way, right? I'm sure that there are people who said, ugh, she is losing, she is spinning out, <laughs> right? But it has been so amazing for me from day one. How sitting has given me freedom. Freedom from a traditional job. Freedom from being stuck in a place that I didn't care for. Winter, winter weather is not for me. It's not for your girl. Dover, Delaware gets winter weather, okay? It freed me from those things. It also freed me from, helped to free me from other people's expectations, some people would have interpreted me being a house sitter as a failure. But look, I house sat May, June, July, August, November, and I think October and November, right? And I spent some of that money that I would have spent on housing and utilities. I spent some of that money to be on a yacht, okay? <laughs> I spent some of that money to be on the Ritz-Carlton Evrema, me and my mama. What could have been seen as a failure if I valued still other people's opinions of me, other people's ideas of what my life should be. Look where I wouldn't be. If you want a little bit of that, <laughs> I recommend house sitting to you. My new house sitter toolkit is at Vicarious. No, is that house sit? It's a long link. Houseit.vacarious.com slash toolkit. Houseit.vacarious.com slash toolkit is in the description of this video. Like Ms. Parker says, free yourself from expectations. Free yourself from other people having a real say. Declutter who gets a say in your life. And live. Because you don't know what's coming. I didn't know when I started house sitting that it was going to lead to this. I have like a house sitting empire. <laughs> right? My YouTube channel, my course, uh, my affiliate partnership with Trusted House Sitters, books on the way. I have a house sitting empire from doing something that a lot of people would really have turned their nose up at, from doing something a lot of people would have viewed as a failure a downgrade at least, if not utterly failing, <laughs> right? So take some chances on some things that are calling you. Once I read that article on house sitting, I knew I was going to start house sitting, right? I knew it was for me. I felt it. It was for me. I didn't predict a YouTube channel. I don't think back then I wanted a YouTube channel. I didn't predict a YouTube channel. I didn't even predict really seeing the world through house sitting. I thought I would see someplace. <laughs> Some, I guess I did know, I did know that international house sits existed, but I didn't have an idea of the scope. I definitely didn't know that hundreds. I, how do I find out exactly how many women, hundreds of black women would be introduced to and would start house sitting because of me? I didn't know that. I didn't know it. All I knew was that it sounded interesting and I, it was, I was, feeling enough of an interest that I wanted to do it. So declutter who gets to say, declutter your values and your dreams and then pursue them. Okay. Pursue them, live them, do them. It's worth it. <laughs> it's pretty nice. It's pretty nice. It's pretty nice. I recommend it. I'm looking out. Let's see. Let's see. What can we see on the water? It's just, it's, there's nothing really happening right now. Uh, yeah, okay. 
It is freeing. It is freeing. Your thing doesn't have to be house sitting, but whatever your thing is, do it without other people getting a say. The other, the people who don't deserve a say, don't let them have a say. Okay. Cause I really, I really, I could have been like, Oh, what a failure. <laughs> I didn't think about it that way. I didn't approach it that way. I was really excited to start house sitting, really excited to start house sitting. Now I was afraid. I was afraid, but I was really excited. But I know that somebody, I know some people were, who were looking at me were like, oh gosh, she done hit the bottom. <laughs> they didn't know it was the top. It was the top, the beginning of the top. P.I. So there's not much to the room. I'll show you the room tour, but there's not a whole lot. Let's start inside and then I'll take you back outside. We'll end up outside. Uh, like I said, room service came. So disregard that. And also I'm wearing, I am wearing shorts, but not, not something that I would normally put on YouTube. Disregard what I'm wearing. Okay. <laughs> Don't touch me. All right. We'll come back to the hallway. Um, let's hold it in this hand. Okay, so bathroom's in here. It's hard to do this on a laptop, but I'll show you. My little Ritz Carlton robe, my shower thing, my thing, my thing, my stuff. This is the bathroom. That's me. Uh, shower's in here. Good size bathroom. Two sinks, as you see, double sinks. Can you see the double sinks? It's really hard to do this in reverse. Okay, double sinks. Um, there's a room ambassador and his assistant. So they just came and made the bed because I don't make my bed. I don't make my bed. Uh, the closets are here. Closet doors. I'm not going to open that because I have laundry in the bottom of one of the closets. Um, yeah, there's a little desk that I was just sitting at. It's full of stuff, but... That's it. More room service trays. I had lunch in here. TV. They give you a little iPad full of stuff. Not give. I don't mean give. I mean, there is a little iPad here. Let me see. Yeah, it's on little iPad in the corner, which you can use to order room service uh, and other things. All right. And then we'll go back outside. Rashida and I are next door neighbors. And so they opened up the balcony so that we can pass through. I'm not going to take you over there because I don't know if she's over there. But this is the little pass through that they opened up for us. And this is my balcony. And this is the ocean. Let's see. Don't drop the laptop. Number one goal. <laughs> Don't drop it. This is the ocean. We we're on the Ritz Carlton. Every time I always forget to take the thing off the screen before I start showing things. the Ritz Carlton Evrima, Ritz Carlton's very first hotel at sea. Uh, we left Bermuda. We're supposed to leave the evening of the 4th, but we left the morning of the 5th and we land in Lisbon on the 15th. We stopped in the Azores yesterday and we stopped in the Azores for three days total, two different islands for three days, which is Portugal's islands in the Atlantic. Service has been phenomenal fantastic, worth it, right? When you look up the Ritz-Carlton every month and you look up the prices, I'm telling you that there is a level of luxury and service and attention that comes with that price tag, worth it. I'm so glad that we got to experience that with our moms. What's going on here? It's just a shadow. We're so glad we got to experience that with our moms and with Rashida's surrogate godmother. Okay. Uh, okay, so this is why we're talking sabbaticals and stuff. 
because you really can do the things on your list, right? Those things that are on your list, we want you to get there. We want you to get to the point where you're doing those things, not where they're just on the list, but where you're doing them and living them. I do think, Rashida, it's worth it. It's worth it. <laughs> it's been fantastic. Fantastic. Um, we all deserve, right? If you're feeling envy. So Rashida, this was Rashida's thing. She was like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this thing. And I was like, oh, me too. <laughs> me too. If you're feeling envy, let that inform you that you want something like this. Right. Instead of being like, oh, uh, who do they think they are? <laughs> Instead of that, write it down. This is what I want. Right. Maybe ask some questions about how to get there and then get yourself there. <laughs> right. I believe in letting envy speak to me. Let the envy tell me because there are quite a few things I see people experience where I'm like not interested <laughs> I feel no ways. Omari oh, said, I feel no ways. But sometimes, you know, you feel that envy. Write it down. I want that. I feel this way because I want that thing. Now let me get myself that thing. Let me get myself that thing. All right? Yeah, we've been trying to share a good portion of it between Instagram and YouTube. I think we've done a good job. And you know Rashida, she'll do a full video, a full like vlog. Um, you know, I'm not doing it. Okay. <laughs> You get a snippet here and a snippet there. Rashida, I think, is going to put some things together more comprehensively on her channel. She is at Rashida. Uh, you'll get a more comprehensive <laughs> conversation about the experience on the Ritz-Carlton Evrima. But it's been everything. It's been everything. Everything we hoped. Everything we dreamed. <laughs> it's been everything. It's been Fantastic. Fantastic. Now we just need to see some whales. That's it. Now we just need to see some whales and it will be in the books. This cruise will be in the books. Okay? Okay. I recommend it, Kiki. I recommend it. All right? I know. So <laughs> because our phones are listening, <laughs> because our phones are listening to us, uh, you will see Ritz Carlton ads on Instagram. I don't. It's, listen, they always talk about their privacy, privacy. Ain't no privacy. Ain't no privacy, dog. This might be ex explain why a lot of black women don't fool with Instagram because <laughs> ain't no privacy. <laughs> You'll see the ads, but maybe those ads will help keep you, you know, keep things top of mind. I had this yacht on my vision board because we already knew. I think by the time I made the vision board, I already knew we were coming. I think. Uh, but I put this yacht on my vision board, so maybe the ads can be used as, like, a vision board. <laughs> if you're interested. If you're not interested, you're not interested. But if you're interested, let the ads act as, like, a visual reminder over and over. I'm doing it. I'm doing that. Okay? Okay. All right, friends. Indeed, Chica, do I have a video on bopping for beginners? I'm starting to feel like I don't fit in the U.S. <sighs> That's a good question. I would look at... I did a video on countries digital for black women, digital nomads. I would look at that. Maybe I'll make a playlist and put it in the description later. So I would, if I was a beginner to this conversation, I would look at my video on digital nomads on countries, digital nomads, love or something like that. I'll look, I'll make a playlist. I would start, I would look there. I would look at my actual sabbatical video. I took a year off to travel full time. Here's what happened. I think that's what that video is called. I would look at that because that's just talking about that. And then I'm sure I have some like actual physical travel planning video. I'll put that in the playlist as well. So if you come back later, watch the replay like with Gimme Till Tomorrow, I'll make a playlist and I'll drop it. Okay, I'll call it Bopping for Beginners. Okay, I'll make a playlist. I'll include, I'm sure... Adelia and Rashida and some other women. I'm sure there are some other videos that I'll add into the playlist as we go. But I'll start it off with at least three or four that will, to get you started. Okay. That's a really good question, Indy Chica. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Let's do a vision board together. Get your vision board. I'm Listen, my vision board is my screensaver. 
And I've had this thing on my vision, this and Fiji, it's on my vision board this year. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. I saw one more thing that I wanted to answer. Jolana, how many people are on the cruise total? Only 170. The ship holds 300 something. Ship holds, I think, 300 people, but there's only 170 because we're on a repositioning cruise. We're on a one-way one -way cruise. Uh, now, only 170 people, but still yesterday, I saw a couple I've never seen before. So I don't know. <laughs> I don't know where these people have been. I felt like I had seen everyone. And then yesterday, I'm like, who that? Who that? Where did y'all come from? Rashida's mom had seen them. She's like, oh, yeah, they're from California. I'm like, I ain't never seen them people. Not at breakfast, not at lunch, not at dinner, not at Sudoku, not at trivia, not at macrame, not at wine. No, we didn't go to wine tasting. At uh, mixology class, we took mixology. I ain't seen them people. But 170, so it's been a really good amount of people, not a whole lot. You've had, we've had an opportunity to talk to people over and over again and get to know some people. Uh, had an opportunity to talk to some crew. The crew and staff and all of that are, I'm not saying they're not busy, but not having 300 people on board means that they have a little bit of time to chit chat with us. So it's been a really amazing experience. I'm not overstating, I'm not exaggerating, but I know the price tag is. It's not a normal cruise price tag, but I'm telling you, it's, it has been worth it for us. We came in expecting top-level luxury, and we got extra top-level luxury. Plus, you know, people like us. They see a group of five black women uh, from 40 to 76, I think, from 40 to 75. They liked us. They really liked us on top of things. So they really gave us a little extra like you know we're nice and super friendly and extra extra nice to us I think like my um I told you we have the room ambassador they're called ambassadors and his assistant was like uh I told him his assistant is Ari Ari was like I told William uh Miss Perry likes those chocolate chip cookies do you have any extras and it, when I came in there was three chocolate chip cookies for a turn down service he's like I told William you really like those cookies I'm like thank you Ari thank you <laughs> yeah it's been fantastic. Fantastic. Okay. We're all under surveillance. Yeah. Like, okay. So I apologize. You're going to be seeing ads for it. If you're not interested, the ads probably won't bother you. If you are interested, let the ads be your vision board. <laughs> let the ads be your vision board. Okay. The journey is, uh, we were supposed to leave the evening of April 4th, but we didn't leave until the 5th. And we land in Lisbon on the 15th. So it's supposed to be 11 days, but it's 10 days. We had we stopped later because of the wind. I mean, we started later because there was some gale force wind. So instead, 10 days, but we were still on the boat. We just weren't at sea. It was supposed to be 11 days at sea. Instead, it's 10 days at sea. But it was really, really awesome. Adrian, those activities, yeah, we did it. We did the things. We went to mixology class. Uh, the moms got a certificate. Uh, Rashida and I didn't get mixology certificates, but Herman and Marilyn did. Maybe ours are coming later. Uh, we, we went to mixology. We went to macrame. Rashida went to painting. So everybody else but me, I think, went to painting where they painted a tote bag. Uh, that's what they're finishing right now. Uh, we've done lots of trivia. Our team is doing really well in trivia. Uh, we've been like second or third all the time. We won at least once. And we've been second or third consistently. Uh, so we've really nailed trivia. Our two partners, now our two partners weren't with us yesterday. We have, there's a couple from Colorado who has joined, joined forces with us and they weren't in trivia yesterday. Uh, I hope they're back today because we needed them. I think yesterday we might have gotten, we were really close to winning yesterday. Um, yeah, trivia, mixology, salsa, salsa lessons. We've done, we've done some things. We've been here participating, right? Here to enjoy, here to get our money's worth <laughs> and enjoy some stuff. Yeah, we've had a really good time, a really good time. Okay, and yes, Arlene says, please give this video a thumbs up before you go. All right, friends, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for um, uh, 
listening and taking this in. So I know I'm just a person who comes up with things and <laughs> says, this is what I think you should do. But thank you for taking the things that mean something to you, discarding the things that don't mean anything to you, right? Thank you for that. Instead of just being like, girl, I'm not listening to you. Thank you for take for taking the time to hear what I had to say and for for processing the stuff that you want to process and also for just flat out rejecting the stuff that you don't want, right? That's you. That's you do what you do. Okay. Thank you very much for that. Um, next time we get together will be the 20th. And so I'll be in France. I'll be in Paris. Next time we get together on a Saturday, so next Saturday, 10 a.m. Eastern, we'll have passed through Lisbon and I'll already be in France. I'm mostly sure about that. Paris. Oh, I get to break out my Francais. <laughs> yeah, I get to break out my French. So next time we get together, I'll be in Paris. Uh, if I have good internet, we may have a guest, but it may just be me again. Uh, the internet on the boat's been amazing, as you can tell. Okay, I've been wrapping this up for a long time. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for your generosity. Thank you for your community and your sharing. Uh, thank you for all of that. I appreciate you so much. So glad to see you. So glad to be able to spend time with you. Thank you for sharing this amazing adventure with me. Have a wonderful Saturday, guys. Bye.